Breaking news on Thursday, January 13th. Longtime assistant Notre Dame coach Mike Elston served with the defense served as the defense line coach the past few years. He's going to his alma mater, Michigan, to discuss the news with me today. It's Patrick Engel, Blue and Gold.com beat writer. I'm Mike Singer, Blue and Gold. And uh Patrick, you know, we had heard rumblings the past couple days that Elston was interviewing with Michigan. Um, you know, Sean Dua was their defense line coach. He's out. Harbaugh brings in uh, Elston. News breaks Thursday. Came together pretty quickly. What was your first reaction when you saw the news? Exactly what you just mentioned. That just shows how quickly these things go. We see Mike Elston calling plays for Notre Dame in the Fiesta Bowl to then going back and doing a, a good job and getting Isaiah Foskey and the Demi Lola twins to come back for a fifth year. And then as you reported, planning to hit the road recruiting on Friday when the recruiting period opens up. But just last week, Sean Nua, Michigan's defensive line coach, he heads out to USC. There's an opening, and, well, here it is on Thursday, and, and Mike Elson's a head coach, so the, or the defensive line coach, I should say, at Michigan. So, yeah, these things move uh, really quickly, as, uh, as we've, even we've seen with Notre Dame's receiver coach hire just yesterday. I mean, how, how big of a loss is this? You know, like it, it is a position coach, um, so it, it's not like the, the magnitude of a you know coordinator or a head coach, but... I mean, like you just mentioned, Foskey, the Adam Lola twins um, coming back, the huge news, recruiting in the 2023 class. He's got two um, top 100 uh, players committed in Keon Keeley and Brennan Vernon. Is there a way to quantify how, how big of a loss this is for Notre Dame? Yeah, I mean, if you want to put it on a scale of 1 to 10, it's pretty far up there in terms of how position coaches go. I mean, this was Notre Dame's longest tenured assistant who – built Notre Dame's deepest and most consistent defensive position, if not most consistent position anywhere on the team over the last few years in the defensive line, uh, certainly shaping up to be that once again in 2022. And it's been really one of Notre Dame's best in terms of, all right, they've been able to play two guys uh, or at each position the last few years. They've had five draft picks uh, since Elston returned to coaching defensive line at Notre Dame in 2017 after a couple of years there coaching linebackers. Isaiah Foskey would have almost assuredly made it six this year had he decided to go, but obviously decided to come back for his senior year. I mean, they just tied the school record for sacks. And then this is just a couple uh, years after uh, setting and then tying again the Brian Kelly era high for sacks. So on the field, yeah, this is a, a position coach who had a really successful run at the defensive line and then recruiting like you touched on. It, you can't do what I just mentioned without recruiting well. And then of course, Notre Dame signing a couple of four-star guys in 2022, having a couple top 100 guys committed in 2023. Obviously Marcus Freeman played a part in that, but Mike Elston did too. So yeah, it's, it's definitely a meaningful loss for Notre Dame here. Yeah. As far as the recruiting goes, I was asked about this on our blue and message board, by the way, dollar for one year premium access, blue and gold.com. If you sign up before February 3rd, uh, you will also throw in a free founders club hat. So make sure um, you're signed up at blueandgold.com. Uh, link um, is in the comment section in the in the bio of this video. On the recruiting topic, um, I, I said the same exact thing, and I, I confirmed this. I was talking to some people close to these recruitments. Notre Dame doesn't get Keon Keeley or Brennan Vernon without Mike Elston, but they also don't get them without Marcus Freeman. You know, like that Notre Dame needed both guys in those recruitments, so. That's going to be something very fascinating to see is this Notre Dame 2023 recruiting class uh, with specifically Keely and Vernon um, being two of the headliners of the group. But then, Patrick, the Adamalola twins, Isaiah Foskey, they still have some time, if I'm not mistaken, to change their minds if they want to um, say, hey, I'm going to transfer or enter the NFL draft. Yeah, I mean, that would probably be more of a surprise at this point than, I mean, it's from what you've gathered and just even what you've reported before on Keon Keeley, like him looking elsewhere or taking visits. I mean, classes at Notre Dame have already started. And, you know, we've heard excitement from Foskey and from the, the twins about playing in the Freeman era. And yes, Elston's certainly a loss in their position group and, and what he'd been able to do on the field. But uh, in terms of 
disrupting the the Freeman era and the start of it. No, that's still going to keep on plugging because, well, Marcus Freeman's still the head coach. So that would be more of a, a surprise there, I would think. But yeah, a certainly something you didn't expect when you look at his role in getting those three guys to come back. And then going back to a month ago, his pretty passionate response of saying, you know, this was about family and this was beyond football. Why uh, I decided to not follow Brian Kelly at LSU and, and stay at Notre Dame. So let's, if you put it in that sense, it comes as a pretty big surprise. Yeah, let, let's touch on that. What did he say? Um, Patrick, I, I can bring up our blueandgold.com, your, your story you wrote on this and, and read this quote because it was pretty passionate. And when Marcus Freeman was hired, it was, you know, we, we reported that Elston was going to be staying at Notre Dame. He was kind of this, um, uh, you know, like in in the in the Goog, you had some of the coaches who had been there for a while. Then you have this like new era, the Freeman era, all these young guys who came along with Marcus. Um, and Elston was kind of a little bit in both. Um, and to, I would put Tommy Reese in that as well. Guys who had been at Notre Dame for a while, and you would say are Notre Dame guys, but also Kelly guys. And uh, you know, Reese stayed, and obviously Elston did, but now he's not. So here was Elston's quote. It's a family decision for me. It will always be a family decision for me. It's not about money. My kids want to go to Notre Dame. That's why I've turned down opportunities for myself. I want my children to go off to college. And when they say to their friends, I'm going home for the weekend, they have a place to go. They know where home is in that South Bend for them. I don't want to change that right now. And that was what, around signing day, Patrick? It was on signing day, yes. And um, here we go, month later. So, <laughs> I mean, how shocked are you considering that quote? But I mean, I guess Kelly was saying the same thing with the tooth fairy in, in USC or the fairly exactly. or whatever it was, you know, what you just cited right there with Kelly, another example of how quickly things can, can change. And certainly in this setting that Elston's found himself in, in the past month where head coaching transition uh, gets to call the plays in the Fiesta bowl. And, you know, I think if, if that, goes well or, or went well, you know, maybe that puts into real serious consideration for the open defensive coordinator job. So, and then obviously Michigan opened up just last week. So yeah, it, it's, I, I, I don't begrudge him for saying that. And I'm, I'm certainly, you know, uh, you got the sense that he meant it and everything, but this is an industry where things change really quickly. Things happen really quickly. And, and certainly even back then when he said it, there was, this was still a time of transition for another game where, you know, you figured, you know, these are accomplished assistants who decided to stay and, you know, those guys get pursued by jobs. And obviously Elston going back to his alma mater, uh, you know, we don't know when that opportunity existed and, you know, you think about it in a, a different light or, you know, with everything that's happened over the last month and well, you know, here we are. It's, it's a fast moving, fast paced industry that, you know, stuff you say a week or a month ago that was completely sincere can be, you know, kind of changed in a minute because something totally unforeseen just came up totally unforeseen and uh, quite the um, you know news for first-time head coach Marcus Freeman. None of these hires have been made official yet, but Cincinnati special teams uh, coordinator Brian Mason expecting come over. Notre Dame will be bringing Harry He stand back former uh, fighting Irish offensive line coach in with the Chicago Bears. And uh, last night news broke uh, on Wednesday, I should say, that Baylor's Chancey Stuckey uh, will become becoming the new wide receivers coach. So you kind of look at all of this. What have you thought about uh, Marcus Freeman's first off season? Because at up to the Elston news, I, I think the only like loss that I would you know say is like a, a loss that you were hoping wasn't going to happen. Probably Kevin Austin. At least in, in my estimation, this this is a big one. You know, otherwise things were going really well. Yeah, this is probably more hiring than uh, I, Freeman probably imagined he might have to do. But, you know, it's certainly a chance for him to shape it in the in direction he wanted, even though I, I think uh, certainly, you know, especially at the start of when he was hired, saw Elston is a part of that. But, yeah, interesting mix of, uh, of guys he's worked with, like Brian Mason, kind of an up-and-comer like Stucky, who just really impressed him uh, when he interviewed for the job. And then Harry Heastand, a guy who knows Notre Dame, obviously, and has a ton of respect from former players and, and players who were on uh, this past season's offensive line, uh, a really well-respected offensive line coach that makes that, uh, you know, kind of a natural fit there. And then, you know, we've seen defensive coordinator names like uh, John Heacock or Haycock being reported uh, that he was on campus interviewing another guy that has ties to, to Marcus Freeman. And, 
yeah, he's kind of gone a little bit of everywhere, it seems, in terms of who's been, you know, a serious candidate or who he's hired. And, you know, we'll see where the, exactly this defensive line uh, position goes here. But kind of think that that might wait a little while until the defensive coordinator job is filled, uh, considering that coordinator might want, you know, have a little say in, in where that position goes. Sure. Coaching news, recruiting, coaches going to be hitting the road, signing day right around the corner, the second signing day, transfer portal we reported. Uh, Blake Group with the Arkansas State kickers headed to Notre Dame. Of course, you had Brandon Joseph. I think that was just earlier, earlier this week. I mean, this, this week has felt like a year, and, and so did the week before. So very busy time at blueandgold.com. Again, guys, just $1 for your first year premium access. If you sign up here in the next couple weeks before February 3rd, we'll also throw in a free Founders Club hat. Appreciate you guys watching. Hit that thumbs up, and we'll catch you next time.